Cleopatra, coming at ya, Cleopatra, coming at ya. Does anyone else remember that uh, obscure 90s band, Cleopatra? Because I do, apparently. <laughs> um, I've decided to come outside today and do my video because it is as hot as Satan's anus in the UK. It is really, really super hot. So um, please ignore the sounds of the two lovely blackbirds who have taken up residence in the clematis at the end of my garden. Um, there's neighbours barbecuing, there's bees flying around, there's all sorts. I live in the middle of nowhere. I live in a lovely village um, full of nature, but the, bee the bees and the birds have decided that they would like to join in on this episode. So if you hadn't guessed, Herstory episode 9! we're so nearly into double figures is about the one and only Cleopatra the queen of the Nile Cleopatra the seventh she was born in 69 BCE Egypt had had a 3,000 year history behind it at this point they're in the Ptolemaic dynasty and they're facing invasion from the Romans her father Ptolemy the 12th uh, he was a weak man. He just wanted to appease the Romans and make them go away. Her childhood was very unsettled. Um, the people of Egypt didn't approve of his alliance with Rome. I have a dog here. Come on. This is Honey. Do you want to help with my video? You can help with my video. Um, <laughs> the people didn't approve of the alliance with Rome. They just kind of felt like he... He just bent over backwards and gave them everything they wanted. Um, so when Cleopatra was four, the citizens of Alexandria, which was the capital then, um, they rioted and they chased Ptolemy out of Egypt. He fled to Rome, returning three years later to snatch back power from his daughter Berenice, his eldest daughter Berenice, who had taken the, <laughs> who had taken the throne in his absence. And he came, sorry, he's talking. So, right, yes. Ptolemy fled to Rome, comes back. His daughter Berenice has been on the throne. He comes back with the help of a Roman general called Pompey, with a Y, not two eyes, And he ruled again as Pharaoh. He had his daughter Berenice executed and his second eldest daughter died in mysterious circumstances so Cleopatra worried that she had two younger brothers who probably wanted to be Pharaoh before her looked to gain protection for herself she made friends with important courtiers who protected her when her father died Cleopatra and her husband slash brother also called Ptolemy so we're now on Ptolemy the 13th uh, they began their rule together uh, in 51 BCE, Cleopatra. Can I do? Can I do this, please? Can I do this, please? Can I do this? In 51 BCE, Cleopatra is 18. Um, she's 10 years older. No, you can do that now. Um, she's 10 years older than her brother, and so she assumed leadership of the country. Cleopatra knew she couldn't beat the Romans on a military level. Um, they kept increasing taxes as a result of her father's alliance, um, which was crippling the poor. So she tried to work with the Romans while also looking for a way out um, of the deals that her father had made. Her father had just kind of rolled over and given up, whereas um, she wanted to appease them, but um, not at the expense of the people of Egypt so she, she was a lot more canny than her dad. Um, Ptolemy had his supporters mainly Pompey the guy from before. He knew that Cleopatra was clever and she wouldn't be controlled once her brother was of age so with Pompey's backing Ptolemy now 16 went to war with his big sister slash wife. I know it's weird it's just how they do it then. In 49 BCE, Cleopatra discovers the plot and sets sail to Syria to recruit an army and she takes her sister Arsinoe with her. At the same time, Rome is in the middle of a civil war. Julius Caesar has risen up to claim the title of emperor, but before he does so, he stops by Alexandria and he secures soldiers and support from Ptolemy. Ptolemy 
then goes back on his good friend Pompey, who did so much to get him where he is, ambushed him, killed him, and gave his head to Caesar in order to facilitate Caesar's win. Nice guy. Caesar ordered Ptolemy and Cleopatra to meet with him. Upon hearing this, Cleopatra snuck into Alexandria along the Nile and went to see Caesar first. She was donned in her most impressive outfit and we don't, we don't know what happened during that conversation between Caesar and Cleopatra, but at the end of it, we know Caesar ordered Cleopatra to be restored to the throne. Uh, my guess is there was a lot of diplomatic talk and a little, little sprinkle of seduction in there. Um, so Ptolemy, when Ptolemy finds out that his sister got in there first, he's pissed and he threw a hissy fit. So Caesar insisted that they should rule together as husband and wife as their father had wished. Ptolemy is not appeased by that and he went off in a massive huff and his body was later found floating in the harbour. Cleopatra is then married to her remaining younger brother, Ptolemy the Fourteenth. we're on now, who was 11 years old at the time. Rumours spread that she was pregnant with Caesar's child, who became known as Caesarian. I don't know if, I don't think there's any link there between our modern day Caesarian, our C-section, but I'm by no means an expert on any of this. Google it, give me the answer, comment below, please let me know, I'm intrigued. Caesar and Cleopatra went north to Rome to broker a treaty. The Romans were worried that Caesarian would be named heir and Cleopatra would then have a hold over Rome as well as Egypt. So there were two different approaches to solving this problem. The Senate made Caesar dictator for life, um, but others decided he'd become too powerful and in 44 BCE, on the Ides of March, Brutus and Cassius um, facilitated, put into motion his assassination. Uh, Cleopatra, who was in Rome when that happened, quickly hurried back to Egypt, keeping her son close by her to protect him. Her sister Arsinoe was plotting to take over Egypt in her absence, the Nile wasn't flooding properly, so people weren't able to grow their crops, and people were starving. So Cleopatra needed a new protector. And therein comes Mark Antony, or Anthony. In Caesar's absence, with him dying, there were three men that wanted to take over rule of um, Rome. One of them was Mark Anthony, and one of them was Octavian, um, the other we don't really need to worry about for the time being. But basically, uh, the Roman Empire had been split into three parts, and Mark Anthony had been given the east region of the empire, including Egypt. He summoned Cleopatra to meet him at Tarsus. She came along dressed as Aphrodite and arrived in literally a floating palace, like... This boat was decked out with loads and loads of oil lamps and it was twinkling and it was covered in silks and it was very, very, very impressive. A, a sight to be seen. Um, dressed as Aphrodite and her seduction worked like a charm. Mark Anthony fell head over heels for her and he moved to Egypt to be with her. Her two remaining siblings, Ptolemy the Fourteenth, also her husband, and Arsinoe were put to death. And Cleopatra fell pregnant with twins, a boy and a girl. In 35 BCE, the third child came along. Cleopatra was crowned queen of the kings and their children were given royal titles and lands. And they set about building a North African empire with Caesarian as her co-ruler. Everything's turning out peachy for Cleo, right? Not so much. So Octavius wasn't happy about this. He wasn't happy about this formation of this North African empire. And he declared war against Cleopatra and Caesarian. Mark Anthony was dismissed from all of his positions that he held in Rome. And he was declared an enemy of Rome. The Battle of Actium saw the first Egyptian defeat. Rumours in this is classic Romeo and Juliet. Absolutely classic. Uh, Rumours went around that Cleopatra had shut herself in her mausoleum and killed herself. Upon hearing this, Mark Anthony mortally wounded himself 
and was taken to the mausoleum. Cleopatra wasn't dead, it was a rumour. Cleopatra, then imprisoned by Octavius' forces, then takes her own life through snake poison. Um, she'd been closely watched by this point, they knew she wanted to take her own life, she'd been closely watched, and uh, it just so happened that this little asp slithered into her uh, the room with the prison where she was being held and apparently she clutched it to her bosom and it bit her and that is how she died um with her death egypt was basically over and now part of the roman empire caesarian ruled shakily for a while um but he was ordered to be executed uh, by octavian and he died in a dark alleyway having been strangled by somebody so there we go, that is the unfortunate story of Cleopatra, always looking over her shoulders, you know, intelligent, beautiful, and obviously an amazing, uh, charming, charismatic, seductive woman who was very good at getting what she wanted. Um, but it, it's a shame that her brothers and her sisters that they just couldn't they just couldn't live together happily everybody wanted the crown so um, it's a real shame for her so i've got a few fun facts about her um cleopatra's tomb is yet to be located so all you budding egyptologists and archaeologists get out there and find her god damn it get out there and find her that would be one of the most exciting finds for sure I'm very, very excited about the fact that one day we will find her. Um, she's inspired statues, over 43 films, television series, 200 plays, novels, including Shakespeare's um, Anthony and Cleopatra. She's inspired paintings, poems, um, even Geoffrey Chaucer wrote a poem about her, 45 operas, five ballets, and a burlesque show so there we go that is cleopatra if you want more information on cleopatra i highly recommend cleopatra the great the woman behind the legend by joanne fletcher joanne is the most incredible woman um she's completely and utterly bonkers oh she's saying it's fine um she's completely and utterly bonkers and that's why i love her but she does an amazing job of telling the the intricacies of the relationships with the brothers and the sisters and what's going on with Rome and she gives it so much more context than I ever could in this in this really brief video hopefully that's made sense hopefully you can understand it hopefully you will all rush out and buy this book and um and and read everything that Joanne has to say about her Joanne is uh, an amazing Egyptologist and if you ever see any documentaries by her please do watch them um, she's a fantastic hostess and um, I just love her I love her to bits um, so yes that, that was Cleopatra I'm gonna go in now as I'm being attacked by bees but yes as always I hope you've enjoyed episode 9 of her story next week we'll be into double figures so please, as always, comment below with who you would like to see in next week's episode. And give me a like, give me a subscribe, all that stuff. Ring the notification bell so that you get notified when I post a new video. And thank you very, very much for tuning in to Cleopatra. I will see you next week.